So hello, Dr. Bauer. You are a professor at the University of Pennsylvania, where you run a lab looking at the basic mechanisms that lead to aging. So welcome to Modern Health Span, and thank you so much for returning. Thank you for having me. So we, we, we talked kind of about a lot of the basics before, but what I would like to start off with is kind of like, why is NAD important? And what are the two main reactions, sets of reactions that it is kind of cofactors for or in, involved in? Sure. Uh, so, so NAD is one of these things that's just involved in the weeds of metabolism, right? All these mm -hmm. different metabolic reactions going on to process fuels and generate energy. Many of those steps require NAD, which actually mm -hmm. accepts electrons that carry a lot of the energy. So essentially the NAD is getting charged up from these molecules as they're getting metabolized. And it brings those high energy electrons to the mitochondria where you make ATP. Um, it also can, can go through um, glycolysis and, and, and help generate ATP that way. And so you really need it to have any sustainable way for the cell to generate energy in a usable form from the fuel that's coming in. And on top of that, it's involved in almost every other biosynthetic pathway that you could name. So, so really there's about 500 different reactions already known to depend on, on NAD to accept or donate electrons. So things biochemically in the cell just fall apart if the NAD is not there. Right. That's one set of reactions yeah. where the primary function, I think, I think really is this redox role of accepting and donating these high energy electrons and sort of con conferring that energy around the cell to generate usable energy in the form of ATP. The second set of functions that's been discovered for it is to serve as a co-substrate for different enzymes that are involved in signaling re reactions. And so these are um, things like sirtuins that take acyl groups off of other proteins and chromatin. And so they essentially are throwing molecular switches, acting as mm -hmm. signals when it is available and these enzymes get activated, they will use it to uh, tweak the activities of many other things and sort of condition the cell for a different metabolic state. Right, and in that second one, they, you know, NAD gets consumed. So I, I guess in the first one, it just changes from NAD to NADH, but in the second one, it actually gets consumed. Yeah, so that's that's an important point. When it's doing this this redox cofactor role, this really essential function, it's accepting the electrons and it's donating them again, and you regenerate the NAD. So it's just going around in a cycle. When these enzymes like sirtuins consume it, um, they release nicotinamide that's cleaved off of the NAD. And so you have to resynthesize a new molecule of NAD to keep the pool from shrinking. And that's maybe where things go awry in certain conditions in aging and in certain disease processes where you don't have enough NAD left. It, it mm -hmm. may really just getting out of balance on that side of the equation. So NADH is the more high energy version because it's holding the high energy electron. Is that right? Or is That's it right. the other way around? No, NADH is the high energy version. That's right. Right. Um, but as we get older, the, the NADH increases. Is that, or, or actually that's a question. Does, does the ratio of the two change as we get older? Right. So, so, so this is a difficult thing to measure. And, you know, there's always a little bit of controversy and, and uh, about how accurately we can, particularly that we can measure NADH. But I would say the consensus right now is, yes, you do end up with the ratio being skewed towards NADH as we age, based on the best available information. And, and one of the thoughts there is that that reflects potentially um, insufficient mitochondrial activity. So the, the mitochondria are the, the organelles right, that generate the ATP and use the energy from the NADH. And so we may be getting into a situation where we age where the mitochondria aren't able to handle as much NADH as is being thrown at them. Talking about the decline of NAD with age, right? So uh, it's kind of a, is taken as a truth that NAD declines with age, but um, I actually tried to find a paper that said so, at least in humans, uh, and I couldn't act, find one. I was looking for one. So what, what have you seen in terms of NA, NAD levels in various tissues with age and, and how, how does it behave? So, so in the mice, we, I mean, we do see consistently in aged animals, some tissues have decreased NAD with age. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not all the tissues. So we published a paper not too long ago where we, we surveyed about 20 mm -hmm. tissues in mice and found probably half of them had an age-related decline in NAD. Um, there mm -hmm. are some human data out there now. There was a, a paper published two years ago looking at, at skeletal muscle that showed mm -hmm. not only did 
NAD decline or it was lower in the aged skeletal muscle, but it was also related to functional status. So older people with better functional status you know, maintained their NAD better uh, you know, as compared to people with disabilities. And there's a Japanese study that also has looked at liver biopsies that's shown uh, in, in human samples that the liver levels of NAD were lower uh, depending on the patient's age. Uh, but there's not a lot. There, there's really, I mean, I think there's four studies that I <laughs> typically cite in papers that are from humans. Um, right. That's really all there is right now. And and how do we, how much lower is that like across the different tissues? What What kind of percentage? So I think we called the median thirty percent decline mm. uh, in, in the uh, in, in the paper we published. Um, there've been a couple outliers that have seen greater in decreases, so sixty or seventy percent in one paper. Um, and there's a paper um, in, in rats that was suggesting more like eighty or ninety percent loss of NAD in several of the tissues with age. Um, but I think I think those are outliers at this point. It's you know it's it's rare to see a fifty percent decline. So you did say that. You know, if we exercise, or the people who exercise, actually, people who exercise had higher NAD levels, which kind of has, well, there's a couple of questions in there. So one of them is, so what are the natural ways that we can combat NAD loss? Uh, so like exercise, calorie restriction, anything else? And, and do we know why they work? So I think even calorie restriction, honestly, is, is a maybe for that. Right. You know, the, the only thing I would feel confident about, well, the two things I would feel confident telling people to do to combat age-related NAD loss and make sure you're maintaining a high-quality diet and not actually causing a deficiency in NAD precursors and exercise, as you said. I think there's pretty clear evidence and there's data in humans suggesting that exercise induces uh, NAD biosynthesis. Um, and so the you know, in some of the studies, it's not clear where, where the who's the chicken and who's the egg, right? People, the people who have more NAD uh, maintain their function better, so they are able to exercise, or is the exercise causal? Um, but there have been some studies showing that directly that you can exercise humans and induce transcription of some of the genes that are involved in NAD biosynthesis. So I think, I think there's evidence there that exercise is effective as an intervention, uh, potentially even in humans. Um, but as far as you know, fasting or calorie restriction, that there's a little bit of evidence in rodents. I mean, there's really, really only two papers I can think of off the top of my head that have shown in um, a calorie restriction related increase in NAD in mice, um, and, and really no data in humans. Um, so we're, you know, I, I think we're you're, you're taking your chances at this point whether or not that's really going to be an effective way to boost NAD levels per se. So I was, yeah, we you did say it's chicken or egg. So we, I mean, in general, people exit, move less as they get older. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it could be just that we're moving less. And so therefore the NAD is going down rather than the other way around. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that there's a, there's a real possibility of that. I mean, for, so, so from some of the strongest work that's been, uh, you know, observational studies where they did really uh, categorize the aged people based on their functional status. Mm -hmm. um, I think that one really illustrates the chicken or the egg problem, right? Because we don't know if those people were moving around more because they were they had higher NAD levels in their muscles <laughs> and were able to, or or if their habits of, you know, of, of uh, being athletes actually drove those higher NAD levels and, and kept them more healthy. <laughs> right. And do we know whether it's like short term, like acute, or it, it has to be long term? So is it, you know, if I exercise for 10 years, right? Do I have higher NAD levels? Or if I just go down, I'm sedentary and I go down the gym and I work out, does that boost my NAD or, or is both true? Or do we know? <laughs> I think the best guess is that both are going to be true. Um, certainly the human data that we have, which again is sort of observational, cross-sectional, but uh, those people, you know, are being categorized based on their habitual lifestyle, right? So that that's years and years and years. Um, that, that's putting people in those different categories. Um, some of the interventional studies that have been done have involved an acute bout of exercise showing that at least at the level of gene expression, you induce some of the genes for NAD biosynthesis acutely. Mm. Um, and, and so I, my best guess is that that both are going to have some effect. <laughs> and, and it could be either type of, I, I mean, it could be like aerobic or resistance training. Do we... Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't think we have the so data to parse right. that effectively. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. No, I was, I was thinking about, uh, was it Janssen's study? Cause that was like steps. So I think, I guess that's kind of aerobic. Um, yeah. No, that, that's the cross-section one I was referring to. Yes. <laughs>
yeah.